If you were standing there in the pediatric section of the hospital, you wouldn't just notice the narrow fluorescent hallway brightly decorated with cheerful looking animals. You would be frightened by the continuous agonizing screams coming from me while I was being wheeled into the labor room. It was October 17th, 2014, and I was at the hospital for just another routine checkup. The father wasn't there because, well, he had killed himself a few months earlier. So I was completely alone in that room. I was in the same room as last time and I was speaking to the same nurse as last time. While we were having a pleasant conversation, I couldn't stop focusing on my left index finger. In the past eight months of this pregnancy, I had chewed up the entire nail and all that was left was a tiny dangling little piece that I had managed to pick out in the waiting room. It was driving me crazy. The nurse was rubbing the lube on my belly and here I am still picking at this damn nail. I really hope my daughter doesn't get my disgusting nervous habits. I noticed that the room had gone quiet and I looked up at the nurse. Her face had completely changed. She was trying not to give anything away. I looked at the ultrasound and I looked again at her. Even though she was trying not to alarm me, I can see that she's frantically searching for something around my stomach, but the only sound we could hear were the noises coming from the hallway. She turns pale and flashes a desperate look at me and then quickly excuses herself to get a doctor. She was gone a long time. It could have been minutes, I don't know, but it felt like hours, days even. I already started to cry in that time. I was shaking, I was nervous, I was petrified. I clung to the hope that maybe something was wrong with their equipment. Maybe it was a technical error. Maybe someone forgot to plug something in. Maybe only my heartbeat was heard because... Then the doctor came in. After he told me my baby was gone, I could see his lips move but all I could hear was ringing. Then, as if someone had slapped me with the physical embodiment of the realization, it suddenly hit me that she was dead. My daughter died inside me. And that was when I started screaming. They had to start inducing labor, and in an attempt to stop the screaming, they put Ativan into my IV. While they wheeled me to the delivery room, all I could see were blurs of people and lights going by me, but I saw nothing. What I could hear were the nurses trying to calm me down, but I heard nothing. What I could feel was that they were doing something to me, but I felt nothing. The only thing that I could hear, feel, and see was the deafening silence where my baby girl's heartbeat should have been. I was in labor for 27 brutal hours. 27 hours to deliver a stillborn. When she was finally out, even though I couldn't imagine any pain greater than everything I had felt in that very moment, seeing a glimpse of her and then her being taken away from me nearly killed me. But they brought her back. They let me hold her. My daughter. I was quite woozy from the drugs, but I still felt the wrenching pain as I held what felt like a heavy, warm baby doll. As I looked at her, trembling, she didn't cry or open her eyes. She just laid in my arms completely still. I got out of bed, holding her tightly in my arms, and walked over to the table they prepared for me and put a diaper and a pretty little pink dress on her. After that, I had to let her go. I didn't see her again until the mortuary handed me a tiny butterfly urn a few days later. The hospital stay after that was nothing short of torturous. Giving birth to a dead baby was the worst experience in the world. I had to heal from delivering a baby, but I had no baby. And I wasn't the only one grieving. The nurses would take turns relieving each other so the other could go cry in the hallway. One nurse even signed a pact with me that I wouldn't try to hurt myself later as I wrestled with the grief. At home, my dad cleaned out the nursery and tore down the crib. All the baby stuff I bought still sits in a storage unit collecting dust. I hope that one day I have a little girl because I bought so much girly stuff. When I got home, I just laid on the couch, crying, staring off into space, crying some more, feeling too much but also feeling empty. In my subsequent grief, I turned to drinking and abusive relationships to try to bury my pain. Just anything to feel numb. After a while, I started torturing myself, thinking about what killed my baby girl. I constantly searched for what I did wrong. 
First, I blamed myself and agonized over the details of the final days when she was still kicking in my belly. Maybe she was trying to tell me something. I really regretted that I didn't know I would lose her. Maybe had I known, I would have read to her a little more and really enjoyed the short eight months that we had together. Then I blamed her father for taking his life and putting me through horrific stress and leaving me to face all this alone. But in my lowest moments, I wished that I just had an abortion or never conceived at all. But I would immediately kick myself for all these horrible thoughts because I realized later that even though she didn't live long, at least we had shared a short moment of her life together. I hope that the short time she had with me was okay. Pregnancy announcements from my friends really pierced my heart. It still does. I have even had to unfollow some because I got so jealous of their ultrasound pictures. Baby showers are still horrible to get through. I just grit my teeth and try to stay busy planning the party for my friends so that I don't focus on my own grief. But I do have to go cry in the bathroom sometimes. I hate it when people ask, do you have kids? In that moment, I have to decide between two truths, for the answer to that is both yes and no. I try to avoid the subject as much as possible. Shortly after my loss, I found great emotional support in groups, but over time, I found that they kept me mired in my grief, so I left them. I found that my biggest sense of relief was when I would speak to other moms who had been through this as well. If you have been through this as well or are going through this, the main thing to realize is that you will never be the same. But you are not at fault. You are not some horrible murderer or a bad mother. You are not a victim of God's wrath or bad luck. Baby loss is just an unfortunate, tragic reality of life. The March of Dimes organization estimates that 10 to 25% of pregnancies end in miscarriage and 5% results in stillbirth. Often the cause is not known or not any fault of the mother. I am now finally at a place where I feel comfortable talking about this. I enjoy my life and focus on day-to-day -day activities, keeping myself busy. I play with my friends and sister's kids to fill the hole in my life that my daughter would have filled. I found keeping a gratitude journal really helped. It showed me all the good things in my life and gave me the strength to take it day by day. I have a boyfriend now and after two years together, we've decided to embark on the journey of trying to conceive another baby, our first together. My boyfriend has really been my rock through this trying experience, though he's sometimes shocked by the racking sadness that takes me over. The decision to try again was painful in itself. I felt guilty, like I'm trying to replace her. I'm also terrified that this may happen again, since I still don't know what caused her death. I don't know if I could even conceive again. It has already been over seven months of trying, but I do read so many testimonials of other women who have been through this and also endure great stress and grief while trying for their rainbow babies. I take solace in the fact that I am not alone, that we have each other, but I don't think I will ever feel relieved until I hold a healthy baby in my arms.